Mori is incredible at conveying the emotions of its scenes through lighting, music, dialogue, and general atmosphere. If I were to ask any Amori fan what their favourite scene was, everyone would have different answers. Some might say the final duet, or the bad ending, or the first scare. Personally, my favourite scene in the entire game would probably be the scene where Sunny finds out the actual events surrounding Mari's death, after having repressed it for four years. The community has dubbed it the truth. This scene is brilliant and contains some powerful symbolism and allusions to the big twist, so let's talk about it. But first, be sure to like and subscribe, blah blah blah, statistics. If you have any of your own opinions and thoughts on this matter, be sure to comment below. Hold it! Oh right, forgot to mention, I now have a Discord server, feel free to join. An invite link will be in the description and pinned comment. Now onto the video. I'm just going to explain the big twist right now so I can refer to it throughout the video. Sunny and his older sister Mari had been preparing to perform a big recital for their friends, Mari on the piano and Sunny on the violin. However, Sunny was getting stressed out from the excessive practice and pressure from his perfectionist sister. On the day of his recital, in a fit of rage, Sunny threw his violin down the stairs, completely destroying it. Mari came over and berated Sunny for his actions, and Sunny attempted to storm down the stairs when Mari stepped in front of him. Sunny then shoved her away, but she lost her balance and tumbled down the stairs, falling onto the violin and probably breaking her neck. Sunny, horrified by what he had done, dragged Mari back to her bed, hoping that she was still alive. There he sat crying for some time. Basil had come over to the house to wish Sunny luck before the recital, only to accidentally stumble on the argument and consequential death of Mari. Believing that Sunny could not possibly have killed his own sister, Basil reached out to the traumatized Sunny and concocts a plan to frame Mari's death as a suicide. The boys carry Mari's body into the backyard and hang her on the tree, using a jump rope as a noose and the toy box as an elevated platform. As the two boys walk away, Sunny turns back and sees something which will traumatize him for the next four years of his life, but we'll touch on that later. Before the truth sequence begins, Sunny has to unscrew the black light bulb hanging over white space, and then engage in a boss rush against every something, with the final one being what appears to be Mari's hanging corpse. By overcoming his fears, Sunny is able to end the fight. Sunny is then left standing over a light bulb on the ground, but this isn't a black light bulb though. This is a white light bulb, something that hasn't been present in Sunny's dreams before. Recall the dialogue of the branch coral in Deeper Well, which states that a black light bulb is the repression of a memory. Thus, by association, a white light bulb would symbolize remembering a memory. To recap, by destroying the black light bulb in white space, Sunny is trying to stop repressing the truth, and by picking up the white light bulb, Sunny is trying to relive and remember what was forgotten. The whole truth sequence is about Sunny learning of the actions of his past and trying to overcome the disassociative amnesia which has plagued him since Mari's death. I've seen a lot of people misinterpret all of the pictures found in this sequence as actual photos that Basil took on the day of the incident. In my personal opinion, the photos shown in this sequence are not real photos, they're probably just what Sunny believes Basil's perspective of the situation was. Sunny finds himself in a grove of trees, which looks similar to his home's backyard. Once Sunny reaches the big tree at the end of the path, Sunny finds Basil, who hands him his photo album before giving him entry to the inside of the tree. Note that it never shows Basil's character portrait when he speaks, probably because Sunny refuses to look Basil in the eye, since Sunny, though not remembering the full truth, knows that Basil is related to his trauma somehow. Entering the tree, Sunny finds himself in his living room. Speaking to his mother on the sofa, she says this, My only daughter is gone, and you are my only son. I can't lose you as well. Interacting with the family portrait on the wall shows Sunny's family with their faces blotted out completely, except for Mari, who is still partially visible. Recall the white egret orchid, which in the language of flowers symbolizes the phrase, my thoughts will follow you into your dreams. Mari is frequently linked to the white egret orchid, so it makes sense that she is still present in a dream, where even Sunny's own parents are almost completely forgotten. It also indicates that Mari is somewhat important to this scene. The photo next to the sliding door shows Basil's reflection as he opens the screen door to the backyard, and the photo next to the door shows Basil's perspective of peering around the door to the stairs. After collecting the two photos, spiders retreat from the door, allowing Sunny to enter the next room. Entering the next room, Sunny finds himself in what looks like a hospital, with 56 hospital beds, most of which are occupied by Mari-like NPCs. 
The eight TVs at the front of the room are broadcasting parts of the player's adventures in Headspace. What I find interesting, however, is that Sunny doesn't recognise Amori or the younger versions of his friends. This makes some sense, since Sunny never went to Headspace, and Amori went in his stead. It's also interesting how, despite Headspace having collapsed after Amori entered Black Space, it still finds a way to seep into Sunny's subconscious. All three photos Sunny collects in this room are related to Mari in her bed, and Sunny sitting beside her. As photos are collected, the room slowly lightens up and patients start disappearing from their beds. Eventually, only a few beds are occupied, and Sunny has to find the person whose drip is leaking. This person is... not breathing. After leaving the room through a window, Sunny finds himself at the top of a very long staircase, very similar to his first nightmare. As the camera pans down, Sunny can see a pile of hair at the bottom of the stairs, as well as a closet next to the stairs which is normally not there in Sunny's real home. This closet is not relevant to this video, however. Descending the stairs, Sunny is forced to collect three photos, and each correlate to where on the staircase they are found. The first photo is Sunny dragging Mari to the top of the stairs. The second photo is Sunny running down the stairs to check on Mari, and the third photo is Mari lying at the bottom of the stairs. Furthermore, at the bottom of the stairs, the pile of hair has been replaced by the third photo. This shows that Sunny's distraught mind at the time perceived Mari's fallen corpse as a mess of hair. I think it's important to mention that this is the point where Sunny starts becoming visibly distorted, as the left side of his face becomes noticeably bloody. This shows that, as Sunny gets closer to the truth, he begins seeing himself as a monster. After all three photos are collected, Sunny suddenly appears in his and Mari's bedroom. If Sunny interacts with the patient next to him, it yields the same description as the other bedridden NPCs. This person is not breathing. The photo in front of Sunny reveals what looks like Basil reaching out to comfort Sunny. There is another person in the room who looks like Headspace's stranger, but when interacted with, he is referred to as Basil, implying that stranger was simply a version of real world Basil in Headspace. When spoken to, he says, Sunny, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. Furthermore, interacting with the calendar on the wall reveals that it is the day of Sunny and Mari's recital. Once leaving the room, Sunny finds himself in a monochromatic concert hall. In hindsight, we know that this was the hall the recital was supposed to take place in. There is a bright light on the stage, but something is preventing you from getting closer. There are photos outside of the hall room which can only be accessed by walking out of the boundaries to reach, and like black and white space, the room is endlessly looping. Every time a photo is collected, a photorealistic hand appears on the screen, and a finger is chopped off it. This is obviously an allusion to how Sunny is ashamed of his hands, which he used to shove Mari. However, I'm not sure what the connection is between the photos found in this room and the finger chopping. The closest connection I can make is that all the pictures involve hands are holding something. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, once all the out-of-bound photos are collected, Sunny can finally access the photo on the stage. Of course, the photo of the violin is found on the stage of the concert hall. After this, Sunny is consumed by darkness. The next room is incredibly black space-esque. It's a black room filled with random surreal objects resembling musical instruments. There appears to be only one photo, illuminated by a white light. When collecting it, a scary piano chord is played, and this is the point where the truth should become abundantly clear to the player. The photo is of Mari and Sunny standing at the top of the stairs. After this photo is collected, ominous droning of random musical instruments begins to play, representing Sunny's clouded mind as he tries to process the new information. Another photo appears, also illuminated by light. When collecting it, the piano chord plays once again, with the image showing Mari moving in front of Sunny and falling backward. After a few seconds, a circle of pointing fingers will chase and catch Sunny, symbolizing how he realizes that he is to blame for Mari's death and cannot escape the truth any longer. As soon as Sunny enters the next room, a musical track called Bad Morning plays. It is a sad variant of the good ending's credit theme, Good Morning. Have a listen. Weird how the variant of the track is heard in-game before the main track itself. Anyway, lit by a dim red light from a screen door, a lamp is visible. Interacting with the lamp, Sunny is asked if he wants to screw in the white light bulb. 
symbolizing how he wants to finally illuminate the truth. Doing so will light up the small room. The entire back wall is lined with photos, with an armchair also against that wall and a photo lying on the ground. Sitting on the armchair for a few seconds will brighten it up and cause the photo on the ground to disappear. If Sunny sits there for some time, brief descriptions will be given about how welcoming and homely Sunny's surroundings are. However, everything goes back to normal once Sunny gets off the chair. Examining the mirror next to the armchair will show Sunny's reflection, a monstrous blackened face with red glowing eyes. Finally, collecting the photo will show the most important photo in the album, indicated by the sudden stop in music. This photo shows Mari tumbling down the stairs as Sunny watches in horror. Once the photo is collected, the screen door will open and allow Sunny to leave. In this room, Sunny walks through another grove of trees. However, the entire scene is very red hued. There are frequent gates blocking Sunny's way, which will not open unless all collected photos have been placed in the photo album. The photos found in this forest are all found in the order in which they are placed in the photo album, which makes sense since Sunny has learned the truth and is just piecing together the final details. The final stretch up the path is very long and Sunny walks very slowly, allowing the player to reflect on all the information they've learned up to this point. When the path ends, Sunny comes across another large tree, but instead of Basil, Sunny finds a noose which casts an ominous shadow of something, and a photo at the base of the tree. Picking up the final photo, the player sees a slideshow of every collected photo, which may symbolise Sunny himself reflecting on the truth he has uncovered. The final photo is of the thing which haunted Sunny for years, Mari's hanging corpse, hair draped over her face with a singular eye visible. The corpse then morphs into the ever familiar something, which disappears with its ominous sound effect. There is a lot about this that I don't have time to touch on, like the unimplemented data mined photo descriptions which can be found in the game files, or a lot of dialogue and descriptions in this scene which relate to other parts of the game, such as the closet next to the stairs. While it may not be everyone's favourite scene, this scene is arguably the most important, as it reveals the true reasons behind Sunny's disassociative amnesia and recontextualizes everything which has happened in the game from beginning to end. As the player realises that the entirety of the game, both real world and headspace, were caused by Sunny's own actions. The truth scene in Amori is a brilliant sequence, and in my eyes, a genuine work of art. So that's the end of the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to make more analysis videos in the future. See you next time.